Welcome to Ghostly. Are the old Confederate prison and cemetery in Alton, Illinois haunted? Ghostly is a podcast that comes out every other week. In each episode, we take a ghost story or paranormal event and look into its complete history. Rebecca then gives us evidence proving that the story is real, and my job is to debate those pieces of evidence and get you, the listener, prepared to vote on if it's real or not. If you haven't yet, please hit that subscribe button. And as always, we're your host. I'm Pat. And I'm Rebecca. And we have a very, very special episode today. Um, we're just going to get into it. Yeah, I mean, great episode. Get, wonderful. I'm super excited about it. Um, but I want to take just one second yeah. and give a little preview. Yes. So this is a great episode. Stick uh, stick through it. It's going to be amazing. Uh, <laughs> and then we're going to take a little break for our regular like week off. Yeah. But then when we come back. It's spooky season. Oh yeah, absolutely. We can't, absolutely. we can't, we can't not mention it's it's, uh, it's the middle of the season. We hope you're having fun. It's been yeah. a little warm around here, uh, by us. So hopefully, you know, it's going to be you know getting in that fall weather soon. But we are going to be talking about for four weeks in a row, haunted airports. Absolutely, haunted airports. People. Absolutely, it's going to be awesome. That we have a lot of special guests. I'm not yeah. going to get into all of the special guests. But yep. and it, it, uh, the first one starts the second Wednesday in October. Yes. We are taking one off because we don't want to do like eight episodes in a <laughs> row here. So. Well, we, we'd love to, but yeah. our schedule does not allow it. But it, it's okay. Uh, but we're still going to have four episodes in a row in October, uh, ending on the 30th. So right before Halloween with... Th- I, you know, if you can, if, if you know haunted airports, then I'm going to tell you right now that you know which one is on the 30th. <laughs> so, uh, no, we'll talk a little bit more about it at the end uh, of today's episode. But I just wanted to put that in here if you're listening yeah. to, you know, make sure you're, you're subscribed. Because, Absolutely. You definitely want to hit that subscribe oh, button. We now. got some good stuff coming. Um, so this would be our time when we usually do shout outs. Um, there's two ways to get a shout out on Ghostly. The first way, of course, is to give us a review on Apple Podcast. You know, we always love those five star reviews, but we'll read any and all reviews that we receive. Uh, the second way is to become a member on Patreon. Just go to ghostlypodcast.com and click on Patreon in the menu bar. Uh, we have a lot of different tiers to choose from. Um, and actually, there are no shout outs this episode except for the third way that there is a shout out, and that is listener mail. And we have a listener mail. Yay. Thank, yeah, we're <laughs> excited to have, have a listener mail in here. Uh, we haven't had one for a few, few, uh, weeks here. Yes. Um, so, uh, so excited to have one of those. Um, so let's, uh, let's read it. Okay. All right. So this is from Anonymous. They wanted to stay anonymous. Yes. Okay. First off, once my brother came up to me to show me our home security camera footage from the middle of the night. Yes. He believed he saw orbs moving Mm. around in the footage. And even though I saw the orbs, I did not think they were anything paranormal. Orbs can easily be explained by dust and Mm -hmm. tricks of the light. Mm -hmm. The next one is a little bit harder to explain. Last year, I woke up in the middle of the night to see my dad standing over me. I was sleepy, but I was fully aware. I was annoyed, so I said, what? My dad didn't respond. I was confused, so I reached up to make sure he was actually there. He wasn't, and the image of my dad faded. I looked around the room, found nothing, and went back to sleep. I don't know if it was paranormal, but it was definitely weird. Pat, if you could give me some sort of, give me an explanation, that would be great. Other weird things sometimes happen in my house, like doors opening when I'm home alone, no windows open, and both of my dogs on the other side of the house. 
I don't have many paranormal experiences personally, but I have a few and lots of family member stories. If you would like, I'll write again and tell a few. Yes, please. <laughs> um, we would love to hear them. Um, thanks for listening. Keep up the good work. Hashtag team believer. Sorry, Pat. <laughs> but she or he, sorry, I guess I don't know. I, <laughs> I actually didn't even see this email, so I, I yeah. shouldn't assume gender. Um, wants your opinion. Yeah. So um, my opinion about that, you're not going to like it. Um, <laughs> I'm just going to really? say that. You're not going to like it. Um Oftentimes, we hear stories about people that wake up and they have some kind of paranormal experience. And every single time, my thought is instantly that they're not fully awake. And I know you said you're fully, you were fully aware, and you might think that you are, but I don't think that you really were. That's my only explanation for that. Um, it, I mean, it happens with people so much so that like the sleep sleep um, paralysis episode that we did way back when, you know, that explains that too, unfortunately, is that people are not totally awake and they're in this middle stage. And um, that is like the scariest thing possible is that middle stage because things can happen to you that uh, feel out of this world, but really aren't, you know, and... Um, I definitely un like understand that. Um, like if I saw my dad, I would, I I would be scared. I would be excited, but scared um, at the same time. So I don't know how I would react to that. Um, I probably wouldn't say what. Um, but well, a little different for you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> your, yeah, Your dad is not with us, but yeah. Um, well, and I think that's so. For me personally, um, I'm. I, I think it's interesting. I think, you know, if it really, two things, if it's your dad, it's a little weird because, you know, if nothing happened to your dad, if he's just in the house, like, why would his image be there? But I also wonder if it was something else and that you put the image of your dad on it because in your mind, like, who else, what what other man would be standing by you? Well, I got the impression that her father had passed on. So <gasps> oh, that's, well, then I'm sorry. That's what I, that's okay. what I assumed. So, oh, Okay. Th yeah. There you go. We both have different backgrounds, so our assumptions. Are so my assumptions coming yeah. from that the that the parent had passed on, and you know it's it is um it, it is really scary when you wake up and you think that you're awake, but you're not really. That's how we get that like dream inside a dream effect too. Mm. Is that you think that you're fully awake, but you're not really awake. You're dreaming of being awake, and that is it's scarier than actual paranormal. I guess I think because she said what made me think like she's used to her dad's around. And so might be, like, might be. I was just there. assuming the other way. Yeah. If the father was around, still the same, same answer for me. You yeah. know, I would wouldn't, be that. I, I would be more skeptical if there weren't other things happening in the house. Okay. Like even if we took out the orbs, there's still like the doors and things like that. Yes. So. Sorry, we're not going to resolve this for you, uh, <laughs> listener. Um, but we will give you our yes. thoughts and take them for what they what they are. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, I mean, hopefully it would, you find them helpful. It would be really interesting if this was like like Black Mirror days, where you know you you had like a recording device on you twenty four seven <laughs> that you could replay that. Then we'd have all the answers to all these things, well, but I, we don't. Yeah. I mean, because I'm also curious about the image of my dad faded. Like, if yeah. I literally saw it fade, yeah, that's freaky. If yeah. it's truly like you blinked and it was gone, that's different. Like, less yeah. scary to me. I don't know. But I, my only explanation is that you weren't totally awake, and you thought you were. Mm -hmm. And it is very common for people to feel that they are totally awake, like, I'm I'm not trying to say that this is um you, you know that like I'm not trying to undersell this at all. This is it's a it's a phenomenon that a lot of people experience. And for some reason especially women and um I know that this is a um female that wrote this email mm. and it does seem like it happens more often to women than it does men so I'm say I don't know why skeptical face is what's on my face right now yeah men, I think men just might not talk about it because they're 
conditioned to yeah, but be if you, the strong man that doesn't maybe, isn't maybe. scared and doesn't talk about stuff. Maybe. But, but there are things that happen to men more often than happen to women, you know, and there are things that happen to women more often than happen to men. And this, like like sleep paralysis, tends to happen to women more often. I think I think it's like two to one, actually. Hmm. So interesting. I have to see that. I have yeah. not done the research. So, all right, I well, mean, I did back in the day when we did our sleep paralysis <laughs> episode. All right. Well, so. why don't you tell the listeners how they can send us their story? Yeah, I mean, it is really easy. You can actually just. Um, Email us at info at ghostlypodcast.com. And that goes directly to me and Rebecca. Mm-hmm. So we're both able to see that particular email. Uh, or um, you can use the contact us form, which emails ghostly or info at ghostlypodcast.com as well. And that is found on ghostlypodcast.com. You click on contact us and there will be a form there. Our favorite way, though, is to get a actual mail Mm -hmm. actual like delivered to our (laughs) p.o box um it's p.o box number 264 geneva illinois 60134 again as we always say you're not going to remember all that just go to the footer on ghostlypodcast.com and you'll see the um p.o box right there absolutely you are also welcome to send us a dm on instagram or facebook um we're at ghostly podcast Check us out there. They they could slide into our DMs. They can slide into our DMs. Totally fine. (laughs) And and actually, if you're on Facebook, we have a really great um, Facebook group, a Facebook group, Ghostly Society. Yes. Where, where, you know, most of the time we share memes and stuff like that there. But I mean, there are occasionally people that will go on there and say, hey, I've had this experience. What do you guys think? Absolutely. All right. And then last, uh, for uh, before we get into our super extra, extra, extra special thing that's happening Well, today. since it's a special episode, maybe we shouldn't do the polls. No, though. we always have to do the polls. But we don't always have but to. We, but we do, though. Okay. Well, we're not going to do the polls in October until the end, right? Well, that's true. But for right now, we're not in October yet. Oh. <laughs> you never know, right? Could be a good thing. Um, mm. In our last episode, we talked about Emily's Bridge. Emily's yeah. Bridge. Uh, the uh, results were yes, 36%, and no, 64%. Wow. See, wow. you were all upset for nothing. <laughs> for nothing. Um, the overall rating is a 2.8. Just like you know, we give our, our ratings on each piece of evidence, you can give an o- overall rating of, of how you how haunted you believe something is Mm -hmm. and um unfortunately we can't do zero so for this one yeah um because our polling system doesn't understand zero (laughs) all right so if you want to vote on the episode that you're listening to right now wait till you listen to it (laughs) uh but you can go to ghostlypodcast.com and click on polls or ghostlypodcast.com slash polls either absolutely we'll get you there all right well as pat mentioned today we're going to do things in a little different order because we <laughs> have a very special guest today. VSG, very special guest. There you go. Yes. VSG, yeah. VSG. Um, and I his- just learned the HBIC, <laughs> but I can't say what that means though now. So. Oh, yeah. No, yeah. not on Ghostly. No, not on um, Ghostly. <laughs> anyways, with us today is a friend of mine and a very good friend of Pat, Mark Garshka. I got that right? Yeah. <laughs> Yay. Welcome, Mark. Thanks for being here. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Thanks for having me. Actually, Mark is the uh, one part of me that is a um, in the middle believer skeptic because um, I am all skeptic except for that one little part of me. <laughs> and, <laughs> and if you're confused as to what that means, maybe. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So Mark donated his kidney to me. Yeah. So I guess if you donate an organ, you get to come on ghostly. I guess. That's just, you know, that's going to be protocol <laughs> from now on. So Jacob Mayfield, next time you come on, just, you know, be prepared. Do you want anything <laughs> from Nick Monaragas? No, I don't want anything from Nick. Jeez. Okay. <laughs> All right. So Mark, um, by the way, thank you. I don't yeah, know. Yeah. You know, I, I have never publicly thanked you like this, but, um, thank you so much. You've restored my faith in humanity because, um, you know, oftentimes you can um, look at the world and it's kind of a dark place sometimes. And, and you just being so willing and, you know, just 
Let's talk about that a little bit. How did you hear that I needed a kidney? Yeah, so I um I was randomly scrolling through Facebook Marketplace and one of the wow. ghostly <laughs> podcast uh posts popped up. Okay. And in that post it was one of those, "Hey, it's another year, Pat's looking for a kidney. If you know of anybody who might be interested, fill out this form for the hospital." And so I was like, well, I can fill out a form for a hospital, whatever. <laughs> and like and when I first filled it out, I was like thinking to myself, you know, I'm going to fill this out. We're not going to be compatible, but at least I tried. Right. And then a little bit later, I think it was almost a month later, the hospital calls me and says, hey, can you come in for some testing? Can we do this questionnaire with you? And I was wow. like, oh, OK, then maybe we have something. Wow. So you did all the testing. You did all the vials of blood that you had to give. Yeah. yeah. You remember how many vials it was? Oh, it was countless. Because <laughs> like every time we went in, it seemed like three or four different test tubes of blood going to one place or another. Wow. Wow. That's crazy. But I know when they were testing you to make sure that you could could get. Yeah. Mine kidney. was like 20 something yeah. vials oh, at wow. one time. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. They tested me for ev- everything possible. So yeah. It's like uh, we went through the whole battery of tests at least three times. Yeah. And then they then they called you back and said you were a match? Yeah, so they, they called me back and they said, hey, it looks like everything's matching up. When can you give? It wasn't nice, like, you know, we want to know, like, can you give at this time? They're like, when do you want to give? And I was like, well, I know when Pat needs this give? kidney, so <laughs> yeah, it's like, let's we don't pick the soonest you. date. <laughs> yeah. well, There's no time to think. We're just doing it. <laughs> right. You did it two and a half weeks before my birthday, so... You you officially were the best gift I got for my birthday. Well, there you go. Nobody could even come close to it, though. You know, that's uh, it's wow. Um, the rest of us will not try. It's okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, unless you have some organs, you know, that's fine. I mean, I'll, I'll take more. I got, I got room. <laughs> um, but yeah, so it, it was incredible to you know hear you got it, and then you know I was always like, well you know, this might not happen because you never know until the last minute. Something could occur. It might not even be anything within your control. Um, And so, you know, my friends were all like, well, because I had only talked to you for like five minutes before that. Yeah, yeah. And my friends were all like, you should reach out and talk to him. And I was like, no, at this point, all I could do is mess things (laughs) up, you know? It's like, he's willing right now. Yeah, and that was one of the scariest things that they had talked about is every time they brought me in for testing, they told me, hey, we can do all this and everything came back good the first time. We could do it the second time and it comes back good, but we have to check at least three times to make sure you're compatible. And that third time could then all of a sudden be an incompatibility. Oh and I was like, that's so much up in the air. Like, yeah, and so much yeah. time that you've How already that devoted possible? to Yeah. That. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. Well, I, I remember, too, so just so everyone knows part of this, and it, this is the weirdest part, actually. I, maybe this is the weirdest part. Weird for me <laughs> is that Mark and I are co-workers. Yeah. So it's not like completely random, except that it is because you and I hadn't talked about this. <laughs> right, like right. I don't rem- I which surprises me. I have no idea why like it had never come up in our conversations, but it didn't that you that I know someone that needs a kidney. So um <laughs> so <laughs> one day randomly you're like, Oh hey, by the way, I've been <laughs> tested and I'm a match and it's like what is happening and the thing is like if you hadn't told me we wouldn't know yeah, yeah. the hospital didn't want to tell you guys I'm no like, they Man. won't like because no. of HIPAA yeah like even yeah. if you said like no I give permission like even the day no. of even the day of so I went to the wrong floor which was actually the floor you were supposed to be on and they were like oh you're not supposed to be here and they rushed me out in case I saw you. Oh, man. <laughs> you know, in case you didn't want to tell me or something. And then after after the transplant, it seemed like it was fine. Nobody cared at all after that. So. Yeah. And well, so one of the things is I misheard the nurse that came in. They were telling me, like, I came up into my room, you came up into your room. But when they told me, it sounded like they had put you on floor four or six instead oh, of room okay. four or yeah, six. Yeah. Gotcha. So at first I was like, oh, you know, they must have been really overstaffed and uh, overpacked and we're totally separate. Sure. And then I go to do one of my laps because they're like, you got to get up and move. You got to get yeah, up and move. Yeah. And then right as I was going past is when Rebecca came out into the yeah. hallway. And I'm like, oh, you're right here. <laughs> We're like two rooms away yeah. from each rooms other. Away, yeah. yeah. So um, how did your recovery go? It was... Um, it was okay. It was yeah. it was interesting. I heard that my recovery was a lot worse than your recovery. Yeah, um, and, and they expect that actually. Yeah. So, so I, I think the hardest part was for two months, for a whole eight weeks, I was not allowed to lift more than a gallon of milk, yes. which is about eight pounds. Yeah. I don't know yeah. the kilos for those overseas, yeah. but 
It's like a gallon of milk. And I'm like, I'm always working with horses yeah. and I'm moving stuff. You're and, a very active person. Yeah. yeah. I'm one of those people that I hate to take multiple trips bringing groceries in. So, so do I. I load so everything I. up. Yeah. And then all of a sudden I'm like, I can't do that. And so uh, one of the, my friends was like, I was over at their place and I was like, hey, I'm going to run over to the store and pick something up. Do you need anything? And they're like, oh, yeah. Um, can you get us a gallon of milk? We're all out. And I didn't <laughs> think about it at the <laughs> oh, time. Oh, no. So I went, I oh shopped, and I had taken a cart for the, in the store, but then getting out to the car, lifting my arm up to put the milk on top of the car to open the door, oh no. I was like, that hurts. Wow. <laughs> it's crazy. Oh no. Wow. Oh, glad you didn't... Uh you know rip anything yeah, open yeah. Or, anything to yeah. yourself. they were all concerned about like me getting like hernia in the incision mm. i don't know if anybody wants to hear this you I, could we're fast getting a forward little this, yeah, yeah right into the weeds with the surgery part but i think a couple things i wanted to bring up so first is you know i think one of the conversations we had just to bring it back a little bit to ghostly was that you would also i believe said that you just listened to the or recently or at some point then you listened to the jacob mayfield episode that we did for the new year where we yeah. do our predictions can you tell us about that yeah so to also tie in some of the other craziness like i used to work in retail at a mall mm -hmm. at a candy shop that's really popular here in the chicagoland area and the mall i was at was not very busy so i was looking at profit and loss statements i was asking my district manager are we closing are we closing they're like no 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 <laughs> and i'm like okay i'm gonna start looking for a new job anyway because i see the writing here black and white yeah. or in this case red um, <laughs> <laughs> and uh I find the job at COD and two weeks after I leave the mall, they shut my candy store down. Wow. And I'm like, knowing the mall, you had to have known that was coming. So yeah. they were just hiding stuff from me. Yeah. But had I not gotten the job at COD in the department mm -hmm. right next to you, I would have never met you, would have right? never known about Ghostly, and then would have never seen this post. Yeah. Um, just yeah. all the things that had to happen for, for this to manifest. Yeah, you know? yeah. right. And so the, the when I saw the post, it was late November, early December. But by the time the hospital called me, it was now middle of January. Yeah. And in that time, I had seen the episode with the predictions and everything. And, you know, one of the questions that you, Pat, were asked was, yeah. you know, what's something that you want to manifest? And you were talking about how you've been looking for a kidney and <laughs> you wanted to try manifesting it one more time. And I'm like... Oh man. And then the hospital <laughs> calls me back and I'm like, this is just like proof the amount of circumstances that had to come together for me to even see the post and then for us to be compatible. Yeah. It's crazy. Well, that, well, that one part too. of me really believes you strongly in this. So yeah. I'm going to go with that. For <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so just to close things up for this part of it, I just yeah. want to mention, you know, I, if anyone listening is thinking, hey, you know, maybe I could be a donor too, because yeah. there are a lot of people out there that need kidneys. Um, the wait on the transplant list for a deceased kidney is long. Um, especially in bigger cities. Especially in bigger Like in rural areas, it might be less time actually. Yeah, so. but still, yeah. you know, it's it's still a wait and there's a lot of people that, um, that are waiting. And there are some really interesting things they can do as far as um, you don't necessarily have to be a perfect match for somebody. Yeah. There's um, a swap program. There's swap program. So yeah. maybe you know somebody in your life and maybe you're not compatible with them, but there are other people that are compatible and you can kind of swap around. So if you're listening and this is something that you're interested in, you know, um, the National Kidney Foundation is a great starting place. And if you look on their website for um, donate, becoming a living donor. Or gift um, of hope. Gift of hope. Yeah. So I'll put both one, of yeah. those in our, our show notes. So, yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, maybe even in our post too, so you can click right on the screen yeah, I mean, on right now and you i mean whoever receives the kidney would be grateful for the rest of their lives i mean mark feels like a member of my family now because of this i mean not that i didn't think he was a great guy before i mean but i mean now it's like i just can't believe the you know the sacrifice that you made for me and i really appreciate that and I'm sure anybody that receives a kidney from anyone always has that feeling inside. Although I will say, sometimes in the middle of the night when I'm waking up four times yeah. with your super kidney in me, I'm like, Mark. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, everybody would be grateful. And if you're willing to, I mean, you, all you need to do is just call and find out if you can. I mean, you might not be able to. You might be able to. Who knows? Yeah. All right. So- 
we asked you uh, what episode you would want to do, and we narrowed it down to Alton, Illinois. Um, and you picked that we were going to do the Confederate prison and cemetery. Yeah. So um, I was really interested in Alton, Illinois. Yeah. Um, your you know, avid listeners might remember back in September of 23, you guys did the Mike, Mick Pike Place Mansion, which... Yes. If you remember, one with a fifty-eight point eight percent to the what? yes, <laughs> and a four point five. I, I don't overall. remember this. <laughs> yeah, actually. somehow yeah. that escapes my mind. Right? I don't yeah. Know how. So <laughs> the believers came together on this one. Yes. But yeah. I had wanted to go over. There's so many other things in this city, and Rebecca was like, you know, we don't have time to go over all of them. So just pick like one or two. And I'm like, well, I can tie all three of these locations together in one story. So I'm going to pitch that and see if that works. <laughs> awesome. Well, I mean, I'm. Really Really excited about it. I did not know about all of this. I started to find out about this right before you had picked the episode because I was watching a video about um, the Joliet prison, which ties in with this, as you guys will find out in the history. Mm. So, uh, Pat, before we get to the Pat facts, <laughs> uh, I do have a ghost story. All right. It's time for a spooky tale from Rebecca. It's hard to be in Alton, Illinois, and not hear about how haunted it is. Supposedly, every house and park has paranormal stories. But we were here for three days before, well, something happened. We heard a lot about the old prison and how poor the conditions were there. It sounds like there was a lot of death. They even say that the reason the town is haunted is because the limestone from the prison was used to build the rest of the town when they tore the prison down. But we wanted to know if any of those who died at the prison still haunted the area. To really get into the spirit of it, haha, we decided to follow the path that the bodies of the prison prisoners would take um, to their final resting place. We were walking down a road where the people say they see soldiers. At first, there was nothing. Just our feet on the road and forest on either side. But then I heard something in the woods on the right-hand side. Just like rustling. I assumed it was an animal, but something told me to go and take a closer look. My husband asked me, where are you going? I didn't even answer him. It was like I was just drawn to this one spot just beyond the tree line. Once I passed the first row of trees, everything got quiet. It was like the road didn't exist. I didn't hear my husband keep asking me what I was doing. It felt like I was in a pocket of time from the past. And when I looked up from the ground, I saw him a figure in a tattered old military uniform. His face was dirty and gaunt, and his mouth was trying to say something I couldn't hear. He was young, with brown hair. He looked so sad and worried. What I noticed the most, though, were his eyes. Or rather, the lack of them. Instead of his eyes, he had dark circles that felt like you could see into the abyss if you looked at them too long. I was just about to reach out to him and try to touch him when I felt a tap on my shoulder. It was my husband checking on me. The moment I turned towards him and then back, the soldier was gone. So was the eerie feeling of being outside of time. I knew the spirit was gone. At first, I was mad at my husband for ruining the moment and connection I had with the spirit. But then I realized that I don't know what might have happened if I did touch him. Maybe he saved me from a fate I wouldn't want. All right. So as always, I have to ask, how much of this is based on reality? I would say it's a story. There are there are stories about people seeing ghosts on this particular road. And I I told my version of what that would be. And is this the Hob Hollow Road? Yes. Okay, perfect. So if it doesn't come up in your pat facts, I've got a couple of tidbits for you. It would not, actually. It comes up in my debate. It sounds like Lord of the Rings, actually. I got to admit. Oh, I did not think of that. Like some kind of Hobbit Road Well, maybe I've been inspired by Rings of Power lately. I don't know. Yeah, exactly. All right. This time, we are really going to take a break, and we are going to get to the pat facts when we return. Okay. Pets, 
Facts. From a skeptic point of view. Facts. Facts. He presents it all to you. Facts. 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 All right, so we're going to jump into the path facts. And Mark, please jump in at any point if you have something to say about anything. Yeah. So early on in the history of the United States, right, we were under English control and, and England believed strongly in like counties and stuff. So every county had a, had a prison mm. and every city would have a prison. So there was a lot of little prisons. Um, but what they found is that when a state is established, it usually wants to create like a state prison then to house, you know, more people and more serious crimes then. Well, and I just want to, this is something that I didn't learn until I was too old to have taken this long to learn, but a jail is yeah. not the same as a prison. No, right. no, it's yes. not. A jail is what all towns do have yeah. of like, oh, somebody was misbehaving, we're going to put you in jail. Or the drunk tank the might drunk be tank, the, drunk yeah. tank, right, that kind of stuff. But when you get convicted and you're yeah. going to be like someplace for a you go long to the time, penitentiary. you go yeah. to the penitentiary or the prison. So that's what we're talking about. And it also depends if it's a state crime that you get convicted of or a federal crime right, sure. so i mean this can get really on uh, convoluted here though i'm so um but let's just picture that so we became the united states and then as states started emerging they wanted their own particular state prison and on december 3rd 1818 illinois became a state and uh as as the trend would have it they created a prison shortly thereafter it was actually 1833, which is pretty short in those days. I mean, I guess, you know, that was like, what, 14 years or so. So that wasn't that wasn't too bad. 15 years. Um, and Illinois op- opened its first state prison in Alton, Illinois. Which is interesting, right? Because today you would think, oh, well, why wouldn't it be Chicago? Alton is like on the bottom of the state. Like it's far yeah. from Chicago. All the way down next to St. Louis and everything. Yeah, yeah but like it, that just shows kind of where the population was maybe yeah absolutely because it Alton was actually a very fast growing city uh, it was growing faster than Saint Saint Louis which was its nearby neighbor mm. um, and it grew that fast because of of how close it was to the Mississippi River so mm-hmm. because then they could you know get supplies all over the place uh, the Alton State Prison opened with twenty four prison cells Alton Prison didn't last very long though actually. <laughs> Uh, it only lasted till officially 1857, although it took time for, you know, transportation of prisoners and stuff. Um, but Il- Illinois decided to close it. So they brought all the prisoners to the new state prison, which is the Joliet prison, uh, which we've done an episode on. Uh, I don't think we call it the Joliet Correctional Center in that one. We call it the old Joliet prison, I believe. Yes. And that's the one where he, Pat himself Sausage saw, King and- saw a ghost- in the oh, window. I did not see a ghost. <laughs> <You> totally did. <laughs> well, I saw someone pretending to be a ghost. It was a haunted house. <laughs> and I don't mean haunted house like in that it's There you know, was not a haunted house happening at that yeah. time. Yeah. At at the time of closure, <laughs> the Alton prison had two hundred and fifty six cells. So oh. it went from twenty four to two hundred and fifty six cells. In like third twenty years. Yeah. Like that. Wow. Yeah, a little bit over that. Okay. Uh, and what was unique about this, too, is that they also had female prisoners there. Oh. Uh, they were also incarcerated at Alton Pen- Penitentiary. Uh, from 1835 to 1858, 65 women and 3,000 men were sentenced to Alton. Female prisoners endured the same uh, degrading conditions as men, while their gender exposed them to added indignities uh, and abuses. And in 1845, male inspectors claimed one female prisoner is of more trouble than 20 males. <laughs> well, it wasn't set up to be a female prison. So, I mean, I, I would imagine that would be true at that time. Uh, women served on average um, like nine-tenths of a year. Uh, and 47% were pardoned by the governor. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> okay. Uh, Around the time that the prison closed, there was this major event happening in the United States. (laughs) I don't know if you guys have ever heard of it. It's called the Civil War. I was going to say, if you can make a guess, right, what happened in (laughs) in the, uh, just after the... The the closure of this prison. So 1857 to 
And it took them to like 1860 to move all the people. Right, right, right. So in 1862, the U.S. had this great idea, right? They're going to reopen the prison that they just closed because it was probably too small and it couldn't house that many people. Um, So they reopened the prison to house Confederate prisoners of war. Um, Now, the reason this is perfect for a Confederate prison is because it was far enough up north that the Confederate army would have trouble getting to the prison and breaking people out because that's what they would do, right? If you're at war and you have a bunch of soldiers in prison, you're going to try to break them out. Yeah. Mark, did you find anything about like why this prison was picked as the place or nothing specifically about why this one versus others, but I know a lot of these prisoners did come from one of the nearby forts that was then conquered. Um, Fort that's escaping me right now. I think, it starts with a D, um, but is it Dearborn? nearby for it? No, um, that's, a, no, no that's, that's us too, and that's yeah. not Civil War. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, they had just conquered this fort, and then a lot of these prisoners came from that fort's battle. Mm. Gotcha, okay. Yeah. Uh, the prison housed over 11,000 prisoners during the war. That's a lot. Yeah, including Confederate officer Ebenezer Maganiff. Great name. Yeah, right? Ebenezer, or the, he went by Ben too. Zip- um yeah, MacGuffin? MacGuffin, that's it, yeah. I was going to say, like, I uh, I love that name. Like, Ebenezer MacGuffin. <laughs> and well, I'm a MacGuffin, a... isn't that when you start a story and that just gathers the characters together so that you can move Oh, yeah, on like to there's no else? real reason and it never comes up again? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Magical <laughs> plot device. Yeah, yes. absolutely. So I guess this is a plot <laughs> device for this story. Uh, he was a Confederate officer in the American Civil War, who carried a Missouri State Guard's uh, colonel's commission and became a prominent figure in the early phase of the war in Missouri. Ebenezer, uh, even though he liked to be called Ben, I like Ebenezer. (laughs) He was sentenced to death by Union Army military commissions in 1862, but was spared execution after Kentucky Governor Barra Maganiff, Mag- Ma- MacGuffin. Mag- I mean, yeah, it's hard. It. I don't know. I'm MacGuffin. It, it Let's just go with MacGuffin. It's just more fun. Um, pleaded for the life of his brother with Abraham Lincoln. Ah, there you we go. We did an episode on him too. That guy. Now, is this your only reference, to Abraham Lincoln? In here? No, actually, I'm going to go on with oh, okay. more stuff. Okay, then I'll let you keep going here. So Lincoln suspended the sentence pending review, but Ebenezer escaped Alton Prison, where he had been confined on July 25th, 1862. Mm. So what happened was Ebenezer's sons, um, Elijah and um, Barra, uh, were instrumental they they dug this 20 they dug this hole for 20 days that was 60 foot long wow and it was a tunnel leading to freedom for ebenezer but then also 36 other confederate prisoners went with them that's crazy yeah (laughs) just to think that they had the time and opportunity to dig three feet per day nobody did anything yeah yeah so it was a really bad i wonder what those uh, guys are doing out there. <laughs> yeah. Looks like they got shovels. That's weird. <laughs> so according to reports, Ebenezer was stabbed to death in 1865 while uh, trying to break up a tavern fight. Mm. So he got spared, but he ended up dying anyways. Interesting. So deaths at the prison were more common than at any other Union prison. Uh, and prisoners faced harsh conditions and regular out- outbreaks of diseases such as smallpox and rubella. Uh, the Alton prison closed again in 1865, this time for good. It was later demolished. And all that remains of the structure is a section of the wall. Yes. Uh, the prison site was added to the National Register of Historic Places on December 31st, 1974. It is also part of the uh, Christian Hill Historic District, which was listed on the National Register in 1978. And the Alton Prison site is maintained by the state of Illinois as a state historic site. Now, to talk about the cemetery a little bit, um, the state of Illinois purchased a three-acre plot in the area. Because if you have a prison, people are going to die in a prison. Well, especially if you have 11,000 prisoners in a prison that well, just Well, this is previously this is even had. before that, too. Oh. Yeah. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But so they just figured people of, are going to die and well, stuff. Well, and so. like you said there's diseases and other things going yeah. through, right? But the plot was known as the Buck Inn. It was just north of Alton. That's kind of a weird name for a plot of land. Yeah. 
I'm Again, guessing there was. It sounds like something out of Lord of the Rings. <laughs> Meet me at the Buck Inn <laughs> where you're going to see Strider. Yeah. Um, so they would bury prisoners who died while incarcerated in the... Alton Prison, Mm -hmm. Uh, while the penitentiary was open from 1833 to 1860-ish, let's say, 30 prisoners were known to have been buried there. So not that many. Mm -hmm. Um, Just one week after the Confederate prisoners were transported to Alton, Private T.J. Stevens and Joseph Pascal, uh, a citizen from Marion County, Missouri, died from pneumonia. During the next three years, over 1,600 soldiers and civilians were buried in the cemetery. Most were buried in trenches, and the graves were marked with just numbered uh, wooden sticks. And after the war, the cemetery was largely forgotten, as much of, um, you know, the burial grounds of the Civil War people, especially Mm -hmm. if you were on the opposing side to where you're at. Right. I mean, if they had passed away... In if the it was Confederate Union soldiers, that, yeah. right, exactly, yeah. yeah. Uh, the wooden stakes rotted away or were carried off for firewood. Oh, jeez. <laughs> uh, in 1905, when the U.S. government provided for the marking of graves for of the Confederate soldiers who died in the northern prisons, they made an attempt um, to identify the grave locations, but they weren't successful. Mm. They they didn't have the right equipment. Well, 1905, at the time. yeah, yeah. Uh, the Sam, Sam Davis chapter of the Daughters of the Confederacy petitioned the government to use the total funds that would have been spent to mark the individual graves and erect a huge monument on the cemetery grounds. And in 1907, the government purchased the site and erected the fence. Um, but 1909, or by 1909, the monument had been erected and inscribed with the names of 1,534 Confederate soldiers that died at Alton. In addition to the name is a tablet that reads. Erected by the United States to mark the burial place of 1,534 Confederate soldiers who died here at the smallpox hospital on adjacent island were prisoners of war and whose graves cannot be identified. Yeah. And although there were at least 300 civilians buried in the cemetery, no effort has ever been made to acknowledge their burials at all. Uh, The gates to the cemetery were erected by Sam Davis, chapter of the Daughters of the Confederacy again. And um, on one of the gates, pillars, it's inscribed, Soldier, rest, thy warfare o'er. Sleep the sleep that knows no waking. Dream of battlefields no more. Days of danger, nights of waking. Okay, so the island, was that where the hospital was then? So, yeah, so once that smallpox outbreak really started there in the prison, they realized they had to get those people away because it has yeah. like an 11-day incubation period, so yeah. you just don't know. So they shipped as many people as they could over to this island that originally was called Sunflower Island. Oh, wow. and pretty. <laughs> because it does, it was pretty, yeah. and then they shipped so many people over there that it got renamed as Smallpox Island. Oh, wow. 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 Now, was doesn't there, sound as pretty with small Was there a hospital there or a structure? They uh, temporarily put up uh, like a wooden care center and like a tent hospital. It oh, was okay. very, you know, shoddy. And everybody who went over there knew that they were going to die on that island. Wow. Wow. That's crazy. crazy. Okay. Yeah. Right. That's helpful to, to, yeah. But that's about all I have for the history. The history is kind of difficult to find because, you know, like a lot of our mistakes in the U.S., we try to just cover them up, so, <laughs> which is typical, especially in Chicagoland area. We, we always do that with like our gangster stuff. and Yeah. Yeah. Well, and this was uh, one thing I read was that this was the northernmost Confederate prison. Marker. It marker? Could have been, yeah, the marker yeah. probably. Okay. Yeah, the marker that's in the cemetery was the northern most. Okay, yeah. gotcha. Something like that. Okay, interesting. Yeah. yeah. Um, I don't have anything else necessarily about the sites other than we're going to get into ghosty stuff. Is there anything, Mark, that you found history-wise that... Would be- um, a couple of fun facts. Um, fun the, facts. Yeah, <laughs> fun facts. Um, so Alton, Illinois, um, when Abraham Lincoln was going to go for the Illinois senator... Um, Alton was the last, uh, the site of the last debate between Lincoln and Stephen oh, yeah. Douglas. That's yeah, what yeah. I wanted to mention. Yes, October yes, 1858. Yes, yes. And that island, when it was still Sunflower Island, um, Lincoln was going to have a sword duel 
with somebody. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. And so that was the island they they were gonna have. A lot of Alton people were being like, you know, duels are so barbaric. This is not good. So Lincoln's first reaction over there is he reached up and cut off the limb of a tree above him, and his opponent allegedly. After seeing his reach and ability to chop off a tree limb, was like, you know what, you win. No yeah. more duel. <laughs> he was a big guy. I mean, I would imagine his reach was incredible. Well, yeah. if you've read Abraham Lincoln Vampire Hunter, you would know. <laughs> yeah. um, but then, as kind of like that, you know, correction of mistakes that you were alluding to earlier, um, when they, when Congress drafted the Thirteenth Amendment of the Constitution, congressional representatives came to Alton. Um, so that was wow. uh, one of the sites of like correcting everything. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Now Alton is not that um, popular of a of a city as far um, as like government. Yeah, exactly. You know, yeah, goes. nobody really goes there anymore. Yeah. Um, and I, I I will say that there is a convention that happens every year in Alton, and it's supposed to be amazing. You know, we've talked to a lot of paranormal people that go to it, and. We should really look into yeah, that. Yeah, at some point. So. Now that you can travel again, yeah, we, we could might, uh, maybe actually go. You know what? But now I, I do remember one other thing, just to go back when you talked about how at one point Alton was a rival for St. Louis. I don't yeah. know if you, any, if either of you saw this, but there was something where St. Louis saw that happening and was there a little more downstream on the Mississippi. So they like built something and I oh, yeah. didn't go like super into it, but basically it was like they, they, they kind of cut off some of Alton's like water or oh, like yeah. ability or it was like, Oh, you could just stop here first, you know, mm. whatever. And so then it kind of diminished. I could totally they, see that. They happening. totally kind of took the bigger city. I mean, look what they that. did with the Cardinals and stuff like that. I mean, I could totally, no, I'm just kidding. I, do, I have nothing against <laughs> St. Louis. St. Louis is actually a really cool town. I had some yeah. the best barbecue that I've ever had there. So yeah, it's fun. It's um, good. Yeah. It's kind of like the weird, like up here where um, like Chicago and Oh, What's the city that's in the Driftless area? The um, Galena. Oh, Galena. Galena. Yeah. Like was uh, it was like Galena or Chicago? Galena, who's gonna win? And then it's like now you're like what? Yeah. <laughs> Similar. Yeah. Well, it's the I and M Canal that did that. Yes, so absolutely. All right. So I think that's it. Do you have anything else, Mark? No, that's uh, pretty much covers everything that I had okay. looked up in the history. All right. All right. So we're gonna take another break, and then when we return, we're gonna get to the debate. back for the debate um i'm assuming that you have some evidence rebecca I, or uh, otherwise it's gonna be a short episode yeah i know no not a short episode i okay. definitely have stuff <laughs> and i know mark does as well awesome um, so uh, before we get into the specifics of the prison and the cemetery i actually wanted to share some thoughts about like alton and paranormal in general right because i know we talked a little bit about that with the mcpike mansion but i think yeah. it's still helpful to think about sure and i found an interesting quote from the Travel Channel Ghost Adventure Show, your favorite pet. Oh yeah, favorite. Yeah, I love they that. They did a two-part special on Alton, Curse of the River Bend, mm. and the show's website says there's a powerful force at work in Alton that shaped this land thousands of years before humans ever set foot here. This town is a perfect paranormal storm. Mm. Dun, dun, dun. That says nothing right there. I mean, seriously, what are they What are they alluding to there? Well, we're going to get to that. Okay. I wanted to ask, <laughs> what, what do you know? Uh, the stone tape theory. Yeah. Oh, yes, that too. Yeah. No, I also have that. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Uh, yes, because there is, well, uh, yes, let's get I'm to that I'm assuming that a, a lot moment. of this is like limestone or something that's like that. That's definitely a, a big part of it. Yeah. But this is something a little different. And that's okay. why I grabbed it, okay? All right. So we don't know, obviously, what the area was like before humans lived there, Okay. But 
there is clear evidence that the Alton area terrified folks long before the Europeans got here, right? In 1673, when French missionary Father uh, Jacques Marquette was exploring the Mississippi, when high up on the bluffs, he saw a cliff painting that struck terror in his heart. Um, (laughs) It was uh, among one of the largest Native American paintings found in North America at the time. And it's come to be known as the Piazza bird. Mm. A legend was later born that the massive beast plucked humans from the river and devoured them in its bone filled lair above the shore. Marquette wrote in his journal while skirting some rocks, which by their height and length inspired awe, we saw upon one of them two painted monsters, which at first made us afraid and upon which the boldest savages dare not Long rest their eyes. All right. So far, I'm really intrigued with this. So, so far, because this is not ghostly, this is more cryptid. Yeah, this is just kind of like a little side quest we're on. So cryptids, I have a hard time with because could there have been this super large bird? Maybe. Maybe we just haven't found any evidence of this bird or maybe it was a pterodactyl or something. I don't know. <laughs> it's possible. So I, I don't know. So, so far I'm going to be like, I don't know. This is not this really one. my evidence. This I is know, just that's kind what, of a thing. That's why I'm saying so far because I can read a little bit. He's got ahead. something I can tell. Well, so have? that, like, if you look at the picture of that bird, it's a terrifying looking bird. And then uh, I didn't realize we could pull that far, you know, adjacent to the city. So I didn't put that in my notes. But if I remember correctly, that painting is pretty high up there where people, especially back in that time, would have had difficulty getting to. Oh, so, so it was a something bird that they took them up there. Right. Or, or it was just so <laughs> like important. Gandalf. It was yeah, so like important. This is Lord the of the Rings. Eagle. This is Lord of the Rings, I tell you. Yeah, important enough where they built a structure wow. to get that high up so that wow. it would last for so, so, so long. So they could warn people about this yeah. giant bird thing. So again. Maybe it was Mothman. Maybe it was Bob <laughs> back then. So this is not evidence as far as necessarily well, if so, you would have won, I think, oh, Rebecca. Okay. I'm well, sorry. Well, it's just an overall, because we often ask like, you know, why is a place haunted? And yeah. we're going to get to, the, we, we should definitely talk about the stone theory as we go. But like, just, I think I was surprised that it's even beyond the limestone. Like, okay. it's like beyond there's the that, lim- but there's that more. That is going to be the documentary of our lives. <laughs> beyond, beyond the limestone. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So here's, I just thought this was an interesting piece of evidence. And I'm curious if you found this too, Mark. So this is that the prison yard right, was turned into a public park in the 1870s. So like after the Confederate stuff was done, whatever, but before they took it down, okay? Or or as, sorry, as they were taking it down, they made it into a park. The main building was still there though for a while. Um, and then they finally demolished it, as you said, in 1974. Um, according to Taylor, we know Troy Taylor, oh, right? Yeah. Our yeah, favorite, yeah. He's a real good guy in Illinois. He knows a lot of stuff, yeah. especially Nelton. He's the one that does the... The conference, I believe. Yes. And he said that even back then, people Mm -hmm. that went inside would report hearing voices, screams, cries, and weeping. Mm. And then in 1889, there were newspaper reports of the sound of inmates marching in lockstep inside the abandoned structure. So that structure isn't there anymore. Okay. So that's true, right? But like... Definitely, even back in the day, people were hearing stuff. And it got so bad that, you know, on top of going from prison to park, it then went from park to parking lot. So it's all been paved over right now. Oh, and they so paved they, paradise to put up a parking indeed, lot. Indeed, indeed. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, okay. All right, so you're first up. What are your, what are your thoughts on this? I mean, it's the... There's so much stuff in and around this area that there's got to be something, some key part of this. And I think that stone tape theory uh, is going to help play into that. But yeah. I'm, and if you want to uh, talk about that at any point, feel free. Yeah, uh, yeah. we'll get to that we'll in a second. There. But I think, yeah, there's absolutely something going on way back when for the natives to be like, we need to warn people from a distance. And then everything else that just kind of piles up, even if it's not haunted yet. You know, we'll get there. But even if it's not haunted yet, there's definitely a confluence of energies or something here. Yeah. And the fact that even back in 1889, there was a newspaper report of people hearing the inmates that really weirded me out. Okay. Well, throughout time in history, there has been uh, certain locations that people are afraid of. Um, Just like horses, right? Horses get creeped out by corners and stuff like that, usually. Like weird stuff that you're just like, what the, what are you, you know? 
uh, anyways, but um, people would get freaked out, especially around woods and stuff like that. They they would just be like, "Oh, that's dark. You don't want to go into there." And they would they would forbid their family from going in different areas and stuff. Um, this is kind of one of those areas where it just it was not um, probably it, it just invoked some kind of fear in people for its the way that it looked. Um, I don't think it was anything with feeling and everything. And these voices that you're hearing too, there are different locations in the world where if you go out, there's animals that might make noises that you can hear echoes of and other things. Like when we were at Batcher's Grove, we heard the trees creaking, which I was freaked out by. I would have been like, I would have been like, that's something right there. But then the caretaker guy told us, no, that's. That's just the trees. That's perfectly normal. This is perfectly normal. It's just nature. And it's not supernatural. It is, it's nature. Eerie weeping. Natural. Yeah. I mean, I eerily weep sometimes. So <laughs> <laughs> I think that's possible. All right, Pat. Well, what's your score then? Oh, zero. <laughs> this one, Rebecca. <laughs> How about you, Mark? Uh, I'd say like a solid six. Six. Okay. okay. So what does six mean to you though? Is six like, is five like your middle ground? So uh, five is definitely in the middle ground. I'd say anything over a three or like a three plus has potential. Okay. And then like all the way up to six is like it's got a solid foundation. And then if I'm going seven and above, like I believe that. Something. Yeah. There. Yeah. Okay. All right. I'm going to go seven. <laughs> of course. Uh, yeah. <laughs> no, because I do think that. Again, is seven your favorite number, Rebecca? Let's. let's it's just... actually not my favorite number. Okay. Um, What's yeah. your favorite number? Eight. Oh, favorite number mm. is eight. Yes. Well, and, you give a lot of eights too. I gotta say. So. Yeah. Yeah. Well, okay. Uh, anyways, whenever I have people pick the, uh, uh, between one and ten, it's always eight. I don't know why they get it wrong. Oh, but, okay. Um. <laughs> so, uh, no, but for me, I think the why I pick I I put these kind of together a little bit is just that historical record of the fact that it's not like we're saying just now today people are saying this place is haunted but that in the past people have and that that always gives me a little more credibility. So. Yeah, but but people also used to believe that if you um that if you got cancer it was because you were a bad person. They, you know, isn't, they, that isn't why <laughs> I mean, I don't think science backs that, but if you want to believe that, that's fine. I mean, it's just like, you know, the, the, we've believed a lot of things in our in our existence, and we've finally come to a point where science can can get to actual like proof of things. Um I don't know. It's just whatever. Okay. All zero right. zero for me. Okay, okay. Let's move on. Okay. Um so now the the next piece I have does relate back to um the story that I told. Okay. So we were at the prison, right? Again, people, you know, see things all that. Now let's talk about where they were transporting people. Okay. And this makes more sense now that I've learned a little bit more about the island because mm. it was like they would transport people on the river. Yeah, so they um, they had the two routes. They could either go the river to the island or for those that were already dead, um, the Union soldiers who were on punishment detail had the unfortunate job ah. of carting the dead bodies from one oh. place to another. And that's where your Hop Hollow comes gotcha. into play. Gotcha, yes, yes. Hmm. So there's this road, Hop Hollow Road, where they would, those, those uh, Union soldiers would have this duty of taking the Confederate soldiers to the cemetery. Um, but often, rather than do their jobs, the story is that they would just dump the bodies in the woods and then spend the rest of their work time you know, drinking, playing cards, hanging out, not. And they're like, why Why are we going to, you know, put these guys in the, dig a grave, put them in there, right? Like, eh, we'll just put them in the woods. No one will know. No one will care. And uh, so then ghosts of these men who were just kind of thrown in the woods uh, are supposedly seen uh, by people walking on that road. Okay. Um well, and Mark, oh, yeah. Mark I was just going to say, yeah. Mark, if you, I didn't, I didn't necessarily find a specific story of someone who saw something, but if you did, I'd love to hear it. Well, there's just all kinds of reports. Nobody uh, wanted to go on the record mm -hmm. calling out their fellow soldiers mm -hmm. for dereliction of duty there. Sure, um, sure. 
but it was just a lot of reports of, you know, these were the Union soldiers on punishment detail. They decided that their shift would be better spent with, you know, drugs and dicing cards <laughs> and decided to skip out on the manual and probably labor. probably rightfully so. I mean, you know, probably if they're going to just take them to their death anyways. Then well, just... they were already dead. So... Oh, okay. Then just throw them in the woods. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah. <laughs> well, except for the fact that then they don't get a human burial in the ground. Yeah. And that's one of the scariest parts is all the stuff I saw, no one even has an estimate of how many bodies got dumped in the woods there. Yeah. yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. All wow. right. So what do we think about uh, those seeing, seeing Confederate ghosts in the woods? Yeah. Area? The woods Around woods there. are a creepy place. I mean, as I just brought up with the Batchers Grove with the creaky woods and stuff like that, I mean, it's creepy there and you're always on the lookout for things. Any kind of motion instantly draws your attention. And there's a lot of motion because there's animals and stuff like that. So, I... I mean, without anybody coming on the record to say that they saw this or anything like that, I, I have nothing to go on here. So I'm going to go zero on this one. How about for you, Mark? What would your score be for this one? Uh, I I would put this one probably closer to the three, four. Um, like okay. it's There's definitely enough reports of them doing this that I believe that they just dumped bodies, but I didn't see more than just a one or two, like, I saw this ghost haunting this road. So probably a three. Sure. Yeah, I think for me it's a four, which is pretty low for oh, okay. me. Okay, yeah, you that's know? that's really low for you. It is, yeah. This one again. Do I think again these men were mistreated and and you know this happened? Yes, yeah. but again, there wasn't enough specific. I mean, unfortunately, about the ghost part. Unfortunately, at that time, kind of like it is today, the the country is kind of divided, you know, and and there's a lot of hate on both sides. Unfortunately, and that. You know, that plays into this a lot, too, I'm sure. Absolutely. Like, why would you, as a Union soldier, want to take a Confederate soldier to have a proper burial? Well, you know, you I don't mean, care. You should because, but you should, you right? Should. But it's it's easy when you're at war with someone to dehumanize the other side. Absolutely, it's kind of what you Absolutely. have to do almost to make it. You know. Yeah. Um, all right, so let's move to the cemetery itself okay. then. Um, so at the cemetery, people experience some strange vibes. They're vibing. Oh. Right. Okay. Um, there's the only the one marked grave, and as you mentioned, you know, there's like the 300 people that aren't even mentioned on this. Yeah. Um, and as people walk around, they are likely walking over dead soldiers. Right. You said they're they just kind of buried them around. Um, so this guy Hawkins, who's lived in Alton um, since 1989, has stated Stephen Hawkins, uh, Gary, Gary, <laughs> Gary Hawkins. Hawkins. Oh, his brother. Um, his believer brother. <laughs> that he no, has no. often seen black apparitions and soldiers in tattered clothing mm. wandering around. Um, and, you know, you can't, uh, he also states that there's no American or Confederate flag anywhere in this venue, even to honor the fallen, even though it's a U.S. government reservation. Whew. But anyway, so this guy claims that he has often seen. Yeah. These kind of black figures, shadow figures, it sounds like to me, and the soldiers in tattered clothing. Did you find anything else, Mark? Yeah. So um, we definitely have all of those um, of the Confederate soldiers. They see people in tattered uniforms. They hear rattling of chains. But mm -hmm. there's also some non-Confederate ghostly happenings here in this mm -hmm. cemetery. Um, the first one I found is a Presbyterian minister, uh, publisher of the St. Louis Observer, Reverend Lovejoy. Um, he, was, he was, uh, <laughs> he was uh, one of the supporters of the anti-slavery movement um, and was publishing a lot of articles promoting abolitionism. Mm -hmm. um, and he was actually killed in a pro-slavery mob while trying to defend his printing press. Um, so he's got a huge monument in that cemetery. And it's said that his spirit can be seen from time to time wandering near the site of his memorial, perhaps even in death, trying to defend his right to freedom of speech. Ooh. Okay. What are your what are your thoughts about this though? Do you are you do you believe this or um I would say probably a five. Um yeah. there's there's been those reports, but I I can't tell you. I found old articles of the Alton Times. The uh, it was mm -hmm. called the Telegraph 
the sure. Alton Telegraph. Sure. And I was going through so many because I was like, I know you want facts. <laughs> so I was going through so many of these articles trying to find someone putting it down in the newspaper. Couldn't find it. So all I have are those stories. Yeah. But it's possible. I mean, his his monument there, if, if I remember correctly, it's like almost 100 feet tall. It's huge. Yeah. Um, and he definitely had a huge presence on the area. So it could well, happen. Anything is possible if you don't use the the laws of physics, you know. Right. I mean, if if we're just like in imagination land, anything can happen, and that's great that it can. And I love these stories and stuff. But unfortunately, uh, we live in a world that's fact based. Yeah. Well, I've got some other uh, circumstantial evidence for you then to okay. throw in, because <laughs> um, right next to Lovejoy's monument um, is another ghostly experience. But this one is steeped in a little bit more tragedy. Okay. Um, so there's a nearby plot belonging to the Haskell family. Haskell was one of the prominent merchants in the area. For his little daughter, he bought her like a life size dollhouse. It's the size wow. of a small cottage. Wow. Um, but she. She unfortunately passed away from diphtheria, oh, yeah. um, but her spirit, the spirit of little Lucy Haskell, um, is seen to, and she was nine when she passed, mm-hmm. uh, has been seen, and it's right next to his monument. Yeah. Um, other children will see her, so she'll come out for the other children. The other children will play with her. She's reported to be very playful and curious, um, but then when moms and dads come around, all of a sudden Lucy disappears. That's very similar to the Graceland. Someday, it is. Right? Yeah, There's it is. The one there. Now I do want to point out, I think these are, there are two cemeteries in Alton. So the Confederate cemetery only has the one monument. And then the one that you're talking about is the like the city Alt city cemetery. Yeah. Oh. So it's okay. Right. I mean, we're still talking about cemeteries yeah. and people seeing stuff in cemeteries. So yeah, it's all good. Um, but just in case anyone, is confused listening so um but yeah i I, again i think for me totally right like we've got people this guy gives his name you know willing to put his name on it that he sees these things there um and absolutely there's multiple reports you know of other again some the cemeteries in alton are definitely haunted is what i'm trying to get at I haven't really gone yet, though, so I'm uh, just well. Gonna, yeah, I'm just giving my okay. side. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I hear you. All right. Um, but I'm just gonna say that with death, uh, and I struggle with this too. Is tragedy always makes me um, want to hope that there's something, you know, some kind of remembrance of of these people? Because in death, I'm not afraid to die. I'm afraid not to be remembered. You know that my existence meant nothing. And we don't want these names to mean nothing ever again, just a random name. So I think that we we ourselves put this kind of stuff into the world where we want to see this and we hope we see this and hope and want, desire can do a lot. Yeah, I don't know. I, I'm not sure how many people well, want to see ghosts. Maybe, but there are some. Well, I mean, especially if it's a family member. I mean, mm, like, sure. you know, my father, my mother. I, I would not want to talk to them as a ghost because I'd be too freaked out. But I want <laughs> to believe that there's some place, you know, where yeah. where their spirit goes on. Yeah. But I just don't. So zero for this one. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, how about for you, Mark? What are you thinking? Um, I, I would think like with everything put together between Lovejoy, yeah. uh, the little girl, and they have a lady in black. They don't have a lady in white. They have a lady in black. <laughs> That's all right. Um, I think, I think I'd go back up to like a, a six for this. There okay. you go. Exactly. Seven. 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 Okay. Your, your second favorite number. We got number. names. We got people. We got, we got lots of sightings. Okay. I like it. All right. All right. Um, I'm going to go then to the island. I did want to bring up something for the island, and I'm not sure if, uh, Mark, let me know if you found any more than this, but um, this there was actually a sighting that happened um, not too long after the war. There were some boys that took a canoe out to the island for like an overnight. And now the story I found said overnight ghost hunting. I'm not sure if that's true or if they just went there to spend the night. Uh, or maybe they were they had heard that there were creepy things going on on the island. I know that would have sounded amazing to me as a kid. <laughs> but mm. while there, the boys claim to have seen the eyeless spirit of a Confederate soldier who tras- chastised them for trespassing. They were terrified and went home immediately. Wow, the eyeless spirit. I don't think that's we've ever had I an picked, eyeless that's spirit. That's why I picked, or I put that in my story. Yeah. 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 
Uh, so yeah, I did find that one. The only other one I found for the island is more recently um, one of the other YouTube channels called Soul Searching. Oh um, yes, I I put that. Now I thought that was at the cemetery, or maybe they did one for the island. Uh, they as did. Well. They did both. They did yeah. both. Okay, all right. I'll talk about the uh, the cemetery one then. You talk about the island. Yeah. So they did um, a couple of different things on the island, um, including a spirit box session. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, but they also put their spirit box inside of a Faraday bag to help reduce any external man made communications. Uh, and they got what appeared to be intelligent responses to their questions. So no. they have it all up there on YouTube. I'll let you go, you know, yeah. give them the views, but there's other stuff going on. Yeah. So, okay. So I'm going to first talk about the the boys. Yeah. And, you know, there there is a difference in children. Some, some children, very mature, very able to, you know... Uh, respond to things in a in a clear manner and and they don't make up a bunch of stuff there's also some children that eat dirt you know it's like we got both sides of the spectrum there which one uh, were you which is had? fine i was probably closer to the dirt eating <laughs> than anything else um but <laughs> but i'm just saying it's like i i don't know i don't know these children enough to trust them and obviously i can't know them because this was shortly after the civil war so gotcha. unless we invent that time machine i can't go back in time so i don't know how to judge their um their capability of understanding things like this so also to differentiate between imagination and reality i mean again some children some adults have trouble watching a TV show and differentiating that this, this is person's a character and not an actual, that's not the person like Archie Bunker used to get that a lot. You know, people, there was a lot of surprisingly, there was a lot of love for Archie Bunker, which is weird, but there was a lot of hate too generated at him. And he was not that guy at all. Yeah. Anyway, so I'm going to go zero on that one. Then to talk about the, um, what was it? The uh, spirit box, the session. spirit box session. Spirit boxes need an outside connection, though. They can't function without it. Um, so it had to have something drawing from something else. Sometimes it's the internet. Sometimes it's radio. But whatever it is, I think that's what it is. I think that we are, um, just like we we're able to see faces and things, we're able to hear things like that, too. We're able to hear words that aren't really said. Um, if you have two different people listen to a spirit box and they don't um, talk to each other, they might have two different interpretations of what actually transpired there. So I'm going to probably go zero on that one because I don't like spirit boxes. Not much, even a so. possibility. This... All right, let's go. Let's go one. There we go. I'm going to give you a one on that one because <laughs> I, I didn't listen to, the, to yeah. the spirit box. So I don't know. Yeah. Uh, it, yeah. I don't know. It is interesting. What do you think, Mark, about the, the kids and... Yeah, so uh, especially with it being uh, so long ago, like the kids there, they didn't have the movies and, you know, the comics to distract them and put they all these... They didn't have Lord of the Rings. They didn't have Lord of the Rings, yeah. <laughs> um, so, like, it, they were old enough to be trusted to go canoeing at night to right, an island. Right, So, tonight. like, in my mind, that puts them at least, you know, 10, 12. Right. Um, and then for them to come back and say, like, because they don't even brag about having gone onto the island. Mm. They're like, we got to the island. And we saw this ghost. He chastised us. We left. So it's like, otherwise, if, in my mind, if they were making it up, they would have been like, we saw this ghost. He chastised us. But we pushed on anyway because yeah. we're brave little boys. <laughs> um, so I like, mean, could be. Yeah, it could be. Yeah. So yeah. I'd say probably I'm going to stick to my sixes. My sixes Six. seem to be running around. All right. No, not wow! You, I'm going an eight. Ooh. Now that you've given this. No, I'm going to. I'll go seven. I'll go seven. But the way you. See, it's good to have different voices on here because, again, I don't think like a little boy, uh, and that makes sense, right? You would wait until the next day when you got home, and you'd be like, "Oh," and then you'd like build up your story, right? Because you look like a coward if you just run home after only being there like an hour. All right, so, so I tried to convince my mom that Boy Scouts was um, something that you would get into if you were going to join the military when you got older, <laughs> oh. and I was I was adamant about this. I was, you know, like, no, this is really what it is. <laughs> Your mom. Oh my god. So I mean I about this. <laughs> this is just I mean, I was the dirt eating boy. And by the way, <laughs> um I didn't tell my mom what I was doing, so I could have done a canoe ride at midnight. It wouldn't yeah. have mattered to 
anything. So, um, yeah. All right. Well, I've got one last one, and that is going back to the other uh, soul searching is the investigation team. Yeah. And they went to the old cemetery location back mm-hmm. in 2021. Um, they did use the same spirit box and got some interesting conversation with what could be the soldiers who passed. Um, and I just grabbed a few of the words. As Mark said, you should definitely go watch the videos. We'll put those in the show notes. But um, they mentioned prison. They, and right after that, dirty. And this is not, this is the kind of spirit box that's more like easier to understand. This like isn't Niels. like, yeah, like Niels. This isn't like a radio where you're like, yeah. huh? Huh? Like, did it have a word in there? Like, this is like much clearer than that. So, um, I don't want to give away, you know, like, like I like Neil's spirit box. Um, so I don't want to give away what I believe that his spirit box is doing. I could be totally wrong. I just have an idea in my head. That I keep to myself okay. every time I hear it. So um, they said they wanted music, and oh, okay. especially when she started to play music, they they really kind of came out a little bit more. Um, there were pe- several people that mentioned their names, and when she asked where they were from, there was Maine and St. Louis. They should play Bismarcky to them. They would never want music again. <laughs> yeah. No, great. What are your thoughts about that? Yeah, so I saw a lot of the. Unfortunately for our argument here in the um, cemetery, I did get a lot of that, you know, the words I heard are not the words they put up on the screen, Um, but I still heard stuff at the appropriate time. So even if it wasn't the same thing they put up, it was like, pause, nothing, 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 question, answer, nothing, nothing, nothing. So Mm -hmm. it wasn't like a constant background noise. It was in response to or appeared to be in response to... um, but this one for their spirit box session in the cemetery, I think I'd go back down to a four. Okay. Well, I'm going to probably say that, I, you know, I've got, as I said, I've got my own idea of what I believe spirit boxes are. But now that I mentioned Neil's, it's hard for me to then say what I believe that some of them, some of them are just radio um, rate waves that they just pick up random things. But I do believe a lot of times it's interpretation. And I believe it's helpful if people are closing their eyes and listening to it by themselves and write down what you think and then compare it with other people. And yes. I guarantee you're going to have differences. And that that to me makes me more skeptical about it. Mm-hmm. If it was that clear prison, dirty and music, you know, then we might have something, but I still don't think so. I think those are words that are put in the box somehow by radio waves or Internet a lot of them use internet apps and stuff too to to generate these voices. So I'm just gonna say that, and I'm gonna I'm gonna give it a one again because I don't know this particular spirit box. I did not listen to the session, but I've listened to a lot of spirit boxes in my day, and none of them have convinced me to believe anything. So. Like I was gonna send it to you, and then I'm like, it's not gonna make a difference. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give it a six for myself, a little okay. bit down. Um, I mean, I do think it's interesting. I think it helps lend a little bit to the idea of those spirits kind of still being there and being restless. Um, but yeah, spirit boxes, there's always a little bit of a, maybe a question. Yeah. Yeah. Now, is there any evidence, Mark, that you found for any of these three places of hauntings um, that I didn't bring up? Um, so there was a uh, ghost hunter girls who went to the cemetery. Oh, right. And yes. I wanted to bring this up because I know how much Pat loves orbs. <laughs> oh, orbs are so great. <laughs> so um, they had two EVPs that they put up, uh, but they clipped them so short that I would want to hear longer clips before presenting them as actual evidence but Mm -hmm. um they're pictures of orbs i mean they're definitely orby um but it's not like super congested with like dust and flies and other stuff so yeah when there's just one clear orb i always think that's interesting yeah so have you ever heard of the term um no seums as far as bugs go Oh, no. Okay, so no CMs are bugs that you can't see with your eye, but that are there or they're very, very small, very, very minute, and they're the, they're the most pesky bugs ever. Okay. Um, they're like, like fruit flies kind of thing, you know, um, but they oftentimes cause orb, uh, orbs to happen. Also, differences with light and differences with cameras and stuff like that can cause it. It's interesting because, you know, I would believe more if you saw it with your naked eye, but then anybody that tries to prove that to me is using a camera to do it. Right. And I can't verify that at all. So, um, 
yeah, orbs not my not my jam. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Zero. Yeah, I remember one of the the <laughs> episodes I just got done listening with earlier this week. I was like, I know how much you love <laughs> orbs. They got to bring up the orbs. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, but yeah, out of the those places that we've gone over so far, um I think that's probably everything that I found. What about that theory that I was just going to say, let's go back to the stone theory. The stone Stone theory. theory. Yeah. So the stone tape theory, it's a pseudoscientific claim. So, you know, it is science, certainly science adjacent. Um, But it claims that ghosts and hauntings occur when historical information is released from rocks and other items. So there's this idea of materials holding on to information from emotional or traumatic events. um, And it all aligns with uh, views from 19th century intellectuals. I have names for you. These people were willing to put their name and reputation on the line, such as Charles Babbage, Eleanor Sidgwick, and Edmund Gurney. Oh, Gurney. I don't ever believe that. No, yeah. I have no idea what Gurney is. <laughs> well, and, and isn't this somewhat with, uh, like, in Europe with the castles and stuff like yeah. that? Yeah. So uh, you guys had mentioned Troy Taylor earlier. Um, he's quoted as uh, saying, being built on top of porous limestone bluffs mm-hmm. filled with caves and natural water sources, some believe that energy from the past is contained within those things, returning like a recording to haunt the present. The British have a name for this, the stone tape theory, which is how they explain the inordinate, inordinate number of hauntings in the castles over there. Yeah, uh, so that goes back to an argument that me and Rebecca have had for a long time, mostly on Ghostly X. Um, is residual ghost, uh, are they actual ghost? Residual being that it's like a memory that just plays out over and over again, exactly the same. To me, no, because... If you had a loved one and you videotaped them and you had their image and them saying something and then they passed away and you put the, well, now it's not a videotape anymore. But if you yeah. if you looked at the video and you saw them, it would be the same kind of thing. So what? Why are you shaking wow, your head? The same th- so, so, so seeing a ghostly figure walking. And repeating the same action as it did in life. First of all, I am not. Is the same. (laughs) I am not. Watching a video. I am not saying that residual ghosts actually happen. Okay. I'm just saying if we're arguing over this, Uh I don't believe that they are. You don't think they're ghosts? They're a memory. But they're still ghosts. I don't. First of all, I don't believe that it happens at all. Uh But if it did happen, and if you could show me one. I would believe it's just a memory playing out. It's like it's like a movie. You watching a movie. As a okay. It's gonna be the same thing if you hit rewind. It's not showing any intelligence, so there's no life there. Mm. It is just just a recording. So for it to be a ghost, it has to have that intelligent action to it. To me it does. Yeah, that's it has I to mean, respond to something. Like to to me, I would say, yeah, that that's what would be more convincing of a ghost. Um residual ghosts just don't do it for me. Poltergeist ghost, I don't I think it's it's very it's, I know, he does this. I don't know. I here's the thing, ghostly, uh please let us know what you think. <laughs> you know, go on Instagram, go on Facebook, Facebook Society if you're on there. Send us messages. Send us an email, info at ghostlypodcast.com. What do you think? If it's a residual ghost, if you think those exist, would you call them ghosts? Yeah. Okay. But what about if you don't think that they exist and you're just pondering the idea that if this was possible? That's and fine. That, you and can that's share me. Those I do not too. believe that they exist. But yes. if we, so. We want to know what you think about all People things. believe that they, they're stored in the walls and stuff. So it's the same kind of thing as that. All right. Let's give an overall rating to this place and then we'll get into uh, our last part. So, all right. Um, so um, my overall rating is going to be seven. That seems to be where I landed a lot. I had a few lower. I almost went higher. But you had a four still, once. I did, but I'm still going to go seven. Okay. I think even though I also had a couple of fours, they were in parts that I didn't include in my research. So okay. maybe that's why I wasn't as convinced there. I didn't find my yeah. own stories. Oh. So I think I'm going to stick with that six overall. Right. Okay. Almost There's three. stuff here, but I can't tell you what it is. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm going to go one. Um, wow. Yeah, because I gave a couple ones, and you know, if I'm a- averaging out, then it would be one. All right, um, then. So, yeah. So we'll take that. So that brings us to the closing ar- argument. We are each given one minute of uninterrupted time to convince you to vote our, our way. Yes. 
we will time each other on our cell phones. Rebecca, you're pulling double duty here. Okay. You're going to be um, timing me and Mark. Yes. So would you like to begin? Yeah, I'll go first. Then. Okay. So let me pull up my timer here. All right. All right. And go. All right. So Alton as a whole, right? Haunted. But I think specifically when we, we talk about this, when I first started doing this research with the prison and the cemetery and the island, like it, it seems like, well, those, those, um, those things aren't there anymore, you know, so no, there's no hauntings. But the reality is like there's just so much tragedy with this as far as the number of people that died and the lack of care given to the bodies that to me, I think... You know, whether you say that this is because that that was done because of the area, that's why people were treated badly, or um, this is just another instance of, of things going sideways um, to cause paranormalness in, in Alton. I don't know, but uh, a lot of bad energy out there. And I do think it's kind of, it, 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 it stays, it lingers. This is just the kind of town where it does that. Oh, you went over a little bit. I know. Bit there's there. so much to say with this. <laughs> I could go on and on. That's okay. We're just going to take 15 seconds from Mark. There we go. No, no I'm just kidding. No, I'm just no. kidding. All, All right. right. Do you want to go next, Pat, or Mark, do you want to go next? I'm fine with either way. Okay. You can go next. All, All right. right, Mark. Let's go. And are you ready? Yep. Okay. So with this being the confluence of three rivers, all of this limestone that was used in every single part of the city and the island, the stone tape theory, the Native Americans with their Thunderbird, the Piazza, and then everything else, just uh, nonstop, all the bodies coming here, everybody being crammed into one place, all this death, and then just the disregard for bodies afterwards, prison being torn down, thrown into the lake, smallpox island happening. There's just so much to pack into one little thing. And just because I couldn't find that one article for Pat where somebody (laughs) else put it down in paper doesn't mean that there's not some kind of haunting here. All right. Oh, look at that. He did. He had more than 15 seconds. I think I had like 20 seconds left. He did. He did. Now, uh, Pat, how are you feeling that part of you just made that argument? Yeah. Well, no, not anymore. Not anymore. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah. True. I've I've fully converted that to a skeptic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right, all right. Wait, let me get back here. Okay. Uh, I love my timer. It's really works out so well. Um, okay, we're gonna have to go this way. All right, you ready? Yes. It's gonna count up. Okay, and go. All right. So. What I try to do in these kind of situations is I try to take out the history, try to take out the tragedy, try to take out all of these things and picture myself stumbling upon this town all by myself. What what would I see? I don't think I would see any of these things that you're mentioning. I think it's only there because of the history. That's the only reason why people believe that they see things is because of the history. I don't believe that there's any substantial evidence here. Uh, I... Love the idea that it could be haunted, but I just don't see any possibility of it being haunted. Wow. Well, I wanted to match with Mark. I see. I see. (laughs) All right. (laughs) All right. So we have our VIP producers that I'd like to give a special shout out to. We have Andrew. Alicia. Becky. Cindy. Kevin. Jessica. Alice. Aaron. Hope. And Candy. And on the next episode of Ghostly, as we talked about before, We are going to be taking a week off um, because we are going to be doing episodes weekly now. So October, um, man, we got to. Yeah. So don't expect the the first week of October to have an episode. It'll be four straight after that. And the first airport we're going to be talking about is Honolulu, Hawaii Airport. Uh, comes out in October 9th. Now, uh, what do you think, Mark? We're doing haunted airports in October. Oh, is Denver on the list? Of course it is. There we go. That's mm-hmm. coming out last. That's going to be uh, October 30th. And we got a yeah. really awesome guest for it. So Yeah, yeah. Well, we have a really awesome guest for this one, too. Honolulu, Hawaii um, Airport. Yeah, yeah. But it comes out on October 9th. And we're really excited to dive into the airports. Thank you again so much, Mark, for being on this episode. It's been super fun. It's Thank been a you. lot of fun. Do you want to do any kind of shout out or anything to anyone? No, I'm just really curious to see how everybody votes on this one. So make sure if you are one like me who oftentimes forgets to vote before it closes, 
just go ahead and vote. Yeah, well, we'll keep this one open the whole October too. Yeah, to give people we a like chance to, do to that. vote. Yeah, so uh, um, ghostlypodcast.com slash polls. Yeah, or just click on polls in the menu bar that's yeah. on ghostlypodcast.com. Until next time, stay ghostly. Bye.